Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Spearhead Sundays. I would like to celebrate the fact that I just hit 69,000 followers on Instagram. How amazing is that? That's great. What a very funny number. What a good meme. So for the rest of this episode, I will be doing the podcast while Keelan sits on my face. You don't like that? Oh, oh I'm indifferent. <laughs> uh, Sixty nine thousand followers. It's a big milestone, and it's it's going to be a long time, long a long road to four hundred and twenty thousand followers. Uh, the next funny number, you know, it's a long way around. Actually, could hit sixty nine thousand four hundred and twenty. That's probably the funniest number. Um, I'm at 69,100, so I'm about 320 away. Could you please uh, follow me on Instagram? And then if we hit that number, um, I will uh, sit on Keelan's face while smoking weed. Uh, Because that's how we celebrate here. And uh, look, I wanted to start this episode off. Look, I know Spearhead Monday, Spearhead Sundays, eat my dick and balls, all right? We're back. <laughs> We're here. We're doing it. I put out a Patreon episode last week. Missed an episode, but Patreon got it. Didn't you go get out. what you pay for. What? Didn't go out. What do you mean? We, we did it, didn't we? We didn't have time to edit it. So we ha- No, one, no had- one told me this. I recorded it. Where is it? I was working Luke and Lewis all week. That's, oh, a, ro- that's a rosy question. Oh, look at question. this guy making excuses. Well, that's a rosy question. Oh, okay. You were there when we edited it. You know what? You're both fired. Yeah, that's okay, it. That's all right. Uh, also, can you please get jobs and pay rent? Because <laughs> I'm going to have to hire a whole new team. It's a whole big thing. <laughs> Are you okay with sleeping outside? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Cool. Can I sleep on like a pillow? No. Oh. No, I'm using all of these. <laughs> <laughs> these this, this copious amount of pillows, I'm going to use every single one of them. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> well, fuck. I guess... Sorry then. <laughs> I guess I'm really so. Well, now what happens with the Patreon? That one's gonna have to go out. I guess it just goes out with this one. Okay, this is good. We can sell this. We can make this like a positive thing, guys. Huge <laughs> news! If you're a Patreon supporter, there's gonna be two Patreon episodes this week. How good is that? That's great. That's you know what? That's you. If you if you just became a Patreon this week, for it's a good week. If you were a, became a Patreon last week, bad week. But this week's looking up. <laughs> You know, it's going to be, it's going to be twice as good as last week. Um, no, uh, look, we've been quite busy. We are getting back into the swing of things. We went away on tour and we got ready for the tour. We didn't not do any videos while we were on tour. That was great. But then we got back and Luke needed to go on holiday. So we had to bank up like fucking three weeks worth of Luke and Lewis episodes because, oh, I've done 69 shows. Quite a funny number. I need a break. Whatever, dude. Work yourself to the bone for Luke and Lewis. Um, No, but we are back and we are doing videos and the podcast will continue starting now. (laughs) I have to say, though, right, uh, I'm going to do that every time I miss an episode. I'm going to go, oh, the sun's gone behind the mountain. (laughs) Every time I miss an episode, I'm going to go, okay, okay, starting again, I will never miss an episode starting now. (laughs) That's what I'm going to do. That's going to be the new thing. Um, But, you know, I did miss an episode, but it was good to see all of my Spearhead Sunday supporters (laughs) out on the West Gate. Um, Just, that was great. You know there were a lot of a lot of a lot of high vis. I didn't know I had so many tradie fans, but it was good to see people throwing shit at cops. I think there's a lot of crossover between my audience and people who don't like cops. Um, and it was great to see like the Spearhead Sundays audience really show out on the Westgate. You guys thought it was a joke? No, that was real. That's the that's every person who was at the Freedom Rally is a true Lewis Spears. <laughs> No one jumped off though, which was a which was a lack of commitment, you know. But it was good to show, you know, people show up, go halfway, half the way. That that is good. Um, those freedom rally things were were crazy in Melbourne. That shit's uh, nuts. But this week we did get a roadmap. <laughs> you know, like I'm not, I don't condone the protest, but what I will say is that there were a, there were a lot of people throwing shit at cop cars and and smashing windows and then the next week we got a roadmap i don't i'm not saying the two are linked i am saying they're quite close they're not those two events aren't socially distancing (laughs) i don't know those uh, you know what i think about those protests 
uh, I was expecting that to happen. That's kind of what I think is like you keep people locked up for so long uh, and people go crazy, you know? And I wasn't pro the protesters. I really wasn't. But when I saw like a bunch of steel cap boots go into the, the passenger door of like some car, I was like, all right, that looks sick. That looks like a bit of fun with the boys, you know? Keelan was looking at the videos getting really angry all week. And I was like, oh, don't get me wrong. I disagree, but it does look like a little bit of fun to just chuck on a high vis, you know, (laughs) you're sick of your day job as an accountant. You're like, you know what? I'm going to be a tradie for the day and smash cop cars. It's a nice little outing. People haven't done anything for 200 plus days. Sometimes you just want to go out with the family, a lot of people were taking their kids, right, and just throw stones at cops, you know? And and if we can't do that, what's the point? I'd join them if they did it here. If they did it here? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I don't know what I think about that. I don't think... Uh, I, I, yeah, I, my, my thoughts is like, my serious thoughts is I just think that of course that was going to happen if you keep people locked up for that long. I do think that it was a little bit stupid for I feel like the the government has been quite harsh with how they've responded to it like because it, it started off as like oh we're gonna have smoko in the city you can't stop us from hanging out on lunch break i want to eat a pie next to my mate and if you're not gonna let me do that i'm gonna have a pie and a dare at your house which is fine fairly reasonable protest and the government was like oh yeah well now you're not allowed to work at all for two weeks of course they were going to lose their minds. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I just think that it's uh, people have had enough of this, I guess. And this is coming from me who escaped. You know, I got, I was, I was going so crazy that I had to fucking escape. And now I have two rents. So, I don't know. No matter what you think about the, the protesters, you, I, you, you have to admit this. They're having a crack. They're giving it a red hot go and good on him. No, nah. I think uh, from being at the, the the Freedom Rally in Brisbane, it was so funny. I got all these fucking comments going, oh, why aren't you marching with the Freedom Rally protesters? Why aren't you marching with them? Why aren't you standing with them? You had to, you escaped and went to Tassie. Why aren't you standing up with them? I'm like, well, because they had signs that were six paragraphs long, all right? I'm not going to stand with anyone who wants me to do that much reading. Like, you're crossing the street. I'm going to see you for seven seconds. You want me to read? There's no para- There's no fucking grammar in that shit. Some cunt spelled vaccine wrong, all right? Sure, I'm sure there was a couple of reasonable people in there. I don't like this lockdown shit either, but I'm not going to look at a sign that, that that's, co- that's like protesting Anthony Fauci and go, oh, that cunt's like sane you're in australia there are a bunch of dudes with like donald trump hats it's like cunt where the fuck do you think you are also trump had the vaccine (laughs) like what do you want some guys going oh trump 45 one he's not your president two he lost the election three he's had the fucking shit i don't get i don't get that shit it's like i don't understand why it seems like so many australians just desperately want to be american and they really want to import america's problems here it's like oh you know hollywood are full of shape-shifting satanic pedophiles like all right dude you can't afford the plane trip to la so don't worry about it let them do what they're doing we got our own shit here i'm pretty sure that dave hughes has never turned into a lizard and then eaten an infant so it's not our issue what we need to worry about is is how many mates can we eat pies around those are the, that's, that is, do you understand that Australians have it so good that really our riots came from, ah, I want to eat a pie with my boys, you know? America had to deal with like a hundred years of the police brutalizing black people and then they had some crazy riots. Our biggest problem in the last 18 months was, hey, don't sit next to each other when you eat a sausage roll. Or you'll get in big trouble. Um, look, I don't know, dude. I think this. I do think that this shit's like all 
beginning to end. I don't think the big conspiracy is to keep us locked in our homes altogether. I'm a big believer in the uh, rich people working poor people to death conspiracy theory. That's what I'm really about. I don't think these fucking, these, uh, you know, the people that run the country are like, oh, great. We have to pay people to stay home. Perfect. It's all working out. We're spending all of our money and no one's making any. Yes, good. Yes, another $2,800 a week to all small businesses in the country. Good. I don't think that's what I want to do. I think what they really want us to do is make sure that we don't eat pies too close together. (laughs) Because Anthony Fauci said so. (laughs) Look, I'm just fucking around, guys. I'm honestly... My honest thoughts on this, I know I said that previously those were my honest thoughts on that. That was all comedic performances that down. My actual honest thoughts on this is that it's just more mainlander bullshit. And coming from someone who's in the real Australia, the T- Tasmania, right? You should let us run the country because we're doing it properly. You know, we're the only people who know what we're doing. Um, in other brighter news, um, I think that uh, the new hire, Rosie, She's settling in really well. She's doing a great job. I'm sure you've noticed in the videos the how good was the tour vlog. Rosie edited all that. She shot all of that. How good was that? That was great. That was I saw that and I thought, well, well done, Rosie. Oh, the sun's up. <laughs> I can't believe it's been 12 hours since I started this show. It's crazy. I saw that and I thought, well, well done, Rosie. She's doing a great job. That's great. Good on her. What a good addition that I've made to the team. Um, but then I was a little bit on the fence about whether or not she's a good addition to the team when she tried to kill me. <laughs> and she's tried to kill me several times, all right, since we've moved in together. Uh, a couple nights ago, <laughs> Rosie was like, hey, let's have chicken for dinner. <laughs> and I thought, oh, great, I love chicken. I've been working out. I've been swimming. I've been going to the gym to get a bit of protein on me. She goes, great, I'll cook it. You don't have to do anything. I said, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> great. And then she served me like (laughs) incredibly undercooked chicken. (laughs) I took a bite into it and then I looked at the meat and then, and then it, 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 it blinked. It was still alive. (laughs) She tried to fucking kill me. And then I said, I can't eat this. And she said, you have to finish it. (laughs) And she forced me to eat it which I thought was the worst part of it. Keelan went and he put his back in the air fryer. Rosie held me at knife point and said, (laughs) finish your meal, pig. Because what definitely didn't happen was me look at the meat and see how undercooked it was and go, ah, can't be fucked going all the way over there. I reckon I'm just going to eat it. That didn't happen. What actually happened was she pulled out a gun and said, finish your fucking drumstick, you pig. And, and I was crying and she made me eat it anyway. She tried to murder me. And then I felt very sick for two days. <laughs> and that's going on your performance review. <laughs> Forced me to eat undercooked chicken even though I was crying. <laughs> Monstrous behavior. Really bad. Wasn't as bad as that other time she tried to kill a cop though. <laughs> You know, I thought she was she was watching all those riots in Melbourne and going, you know what, I, these guys are making a lot of sense. <laughs> I thought that was a little bit fucked. <laughs> We're driving from the airport. Her engine starts shutting down, or so she says, right? <laughs> Maybe she's probably a, another one of Rosie's lies, right? <laughs> and then we, and then there's a red light, and she's freaking out about her, her car engine, which of course she's she's set up before herself. I think she was messing with the engine before we got in the car. I saw her cutting some things. <laughs> I don't know what she was trying to do, manipulate the engine. She was trying to kill me. I'm pretty sure, right? Um, <laughs> And she goes, she, there's a red light coming up and I saw the red light. I said, stop, please don't go through it, right? I didn't. I didn't <laughs> notice it. Actually, I think I noticed it. I was like, oh, that looks like a red light. She probably knows what she's doing. Uh, <laughs> and she, she runs the red light and then almost runs straight into a cop while the engine's also shutting down. And, and, I, and I said, Rosie, what are you doing? And she said, freedom day! <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> And then the the strangest shit happened, right? We're in Tassie. I've never had an experience like this in my life. So think about this. Think about you're a, you're a police officer. You see someone with Victorian plates with their hazard lights on, 
run a red light and then almost hit you, a police officer. And then she just follows it. The police officer follows us for ages. Rosie finds a safe place to pull over on her shoulder because the engine starts to die. And the police officer gets out, right? And I'm thinking, well, we're going to end up on live leak. This is how it ends, you know. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a video that's next to like a, a security camera footage of some factory worker in Beijing, you know. Like this is how it ends. Comedian gets killed by police officer, um, but then the cop she just comes up, she winds down the window, she goes, "Hey, hey guys, how you going? My name's this, right? How you going?" And I'm like, "Oh no, she's gonna do one of those things where she's like, oh." Did you know that you almost hit me? Well, then fuck you. I thought she was going to lose it, but she was just nice the whole time. She goes, my name's Officer This, and um, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, you actually uh, ran a red light and then almost killed me. Um, uh, did you notice that? And and Rosie's like, oh, yeah, I'm just really sick of all the, all the lockdown rules. <laughs> Defaming Rosie. <laughs> and the cop just goes, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you off. She didn't even say I'm going to let you off with a warning. She goes, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow you all the way home just to make sure you get home safe. I'm like, bitch, do you understand that we almost killed you? And she goes, that's all right. We've all been there. And then she just drove us home, dropped us off, and nothing happened. That's the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. If that was a police officer in Sydney, they would have put your head on the road. And then pulled it off. So I don't know what it is about uh, Hobart, but everyone is nice. Every single person in this state is really nice. And as someone who's not as nice as anyone in this state, it's kind of freaking me out. I walked into a cafe this morning and there were two people waiting for their coffee and they were having a, a, a really enthralling conversation with the barista. If I make eye contact with a barista in the CBD of Melbourne, they'll spit in my drink. <laughs> and and I will have to go, well, fair enough. I deserved it. I looked at her. <laughs> These two people were like talking. And, and also the two people didn't know each other either. They were talking to each other, having a bit of banter. I order my coffee and he goes, hey, mate, how are you doing today? And I was like, yeah, good. Can I get a, oh, that's great to hear. Are you up to much? I'm like, oh, yeah, I just got back from the pool. You're the pool. Are you a swimmer? Oh, wow, are you, are you doing it as like a hobby? I said, give me a fucking coffee. And she said, yeah, absolutely. No worries. Would you like to hit me? Like, it's so fucking polite. I can't, I don't know what to do. I've never had so many people be so nice to me for so long. I don't know how to handle it. I'm waiting here for someone to lose it at me so I can justify my shit attitude. I'm waiting for it. Like, I knew it. I knew this lack of a smile was worth something. And then the barista, right, serves the, the two people the, the coffee and the way they served it to them was like they were standing next to each other and they and the barista give, puts the two coffees down and like the woman's coffee was on the guy's side and the guy's coffee was on the woman's side and then the guy came up and was like, oh, you got it on the wrong side. Are you just trying to mess with me? And then they all pissed themselves for 30 seconds. And I looked at it and I was like, what the fuck is in the water? <laughs> they thought that was the funniest shit ever. And then the guy, right, as the woman's getting the coffee, he swaps them around and goes, there you go, that one's yours. I've done your job for you. They laugh again. <laughs> and then the guy grabs his coffee and instead of saying goodbye, he just like waves like the cl <laughs> the queen. This all happened. It's all true. Waves like the queen really silently, not saying goodbye. Every single cunt in the shop got a little silent wave as he was walking slowly backwards out of the store. And then he looked at me staring at him. He goes, one for you too, mate. And then left... And then the woman's like, oh, did he leave without saying anything? What a bloody rude bugger. And they laughed again. I thought, fuck, I need to leave. I feel much more at home when people in high vis are punching on with cops. Uh, tell the story of how I almost abused a random woman. Oh, yeah. Keelan has been, Keelan's been dealing with this the worst <laughs> because I'm like, I'm not a rude per. I'll never be rude, but I'm, I'm quite reserved where I'm like, I don't really want to talk to you. I just want my thing. Right, I want I want an in, out. That's it. Hi, I would like this. You would like my money. Great. 
I was always shit at job interviews for that reason because they'd be like, why do you want the job? And I'd go, because for the money, actually, because I have expenses and, and, uh, and I need food to live and I would like to exchange the money. I would like to exchange my time for your money and then I'd like to take that money and use that to buy goods and services because that's how the fucking world works. I don't want to work in a call center. What do you want me to say? You want me to lie? I'm really passionate about giving people refunds for eggs because they arrive smashed. It's my passion in life. No. I'd rather die than talk to another old bitch. Oh, my dozen eggs, uh, some of them were cr- cracked. Can I have a refund? No, you old bitch. They come cracked. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you want full eggs? Go to the shops, bitch. That's what I would love to do, right? Just give me my shit and then go away. Keelan, however, will be rude to someone. <laughs> If they, if they, if they mess, I, dude, I have never seen a man so angry as when they gave, uh, he rocked up to McDonald's and they gave him a drink in the wrong cup. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the drink. It tastes exactly the same, but it's in the wrong cup. <laughs> That's how pedantic this man is about anything. He's, I reckon he's on the spectrum a little bit. He goes, I'm expecting my iced coffee to arrive in the plastic cup. If I get it in the foam cup. It's going in your face. <laughs> to the point where this one place gave him the wrong cup three times in a row, so we just started ordering. Uh, can I get it in the right cup, please? <laughs> Wouldn't say, can I get it in the plastic cup? He would go, can I get it in the correct cup? And then let them figure out which one it is. They don't know what cup it is, otherwise they give you the right one. <laughs> Hi, can I get an iced coffee uh, and can you do your fucking job right, please? Thank you. Right? So, Keelan, we're going to the pool because we're athletes now. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, and the, they changed the... I don't know if they changed it or if Keelan's just been driving in the exit the whole time. So that was probably what's happening. See, in my mind, I'm like, oh, Keelan's been going in this entrance every single day they must have changed it i've just realized right now that for every single day five days a week keelan's been going in the exit and it's only recently been getting annoyed because there have been people trying to leave through the exit as is their right mm. so there's this woman coming out the exit keelan's trying to go in the exit and then this woman she pulls up next to us because that's where she has to go because it's the exit that he's trying to enter <laughs> And then she winds her window down and Keelan goes, oh, what does this stupid bitch want? (laughs) So loud, like so fucking loud, she can absolutely hear it. And she, really lovely, just goes, oh, um, this is actually the exit. The entrance is over there. So what you'll need to do is you just need to go down there, do a U-turn and turn back. And Keelan's like, oh, (laughs) oh, thank you so much. That's really, really helpful. Oh, you stupid <laughs> fuck. Oh, you're trying to help me. And I reckon I've watched this cunt do this six times before that incident and ten times after. Just no benefit of the doubt. Like, you haven't... Oh, the sun's up. You haven't had a single negative interaction yet, have you? I had one. One. I was driving Luke and Meg to the airport. Meg. And some guy starts beeping at me. So I rolled down my window and go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and I crushed. Luke laughed so much. <laughs> what did he do? Oh, he did it back. Yeah. But he did it first. So I was, yeah. I was, you yeah. know, it was, it was. Two dogs on either side of a window barking <laughs> at each other. <laughs> you open the door and they go, oh, actually, never mind. Absolutely. I only wanted to fight if it was impossible to fight, <laughs> actually. Yeah, if I can't get hurt, that's my line. <laughs> Great. Well, I've uh, I've recently become an athlete, guys. I haven't talked about this on Spirit Sundays. Talked about it a little bit on Luke and Lewis. I've gotten really into swimming. Who would have fucking seen that coming? Really, really into swimming. I've been going f- uh, pretty much five days a week for the last three weeks now. Uh, touring, we missed a couple of days, but we were touring. It's awesome. I fucking love it. I went from uh, doing 400 meters and then just dying after like maybe 40 minutes. It took me to do that. Then the next day I got up to 600. Uh, Just this morning I did 1.2 kilometers and I felt like I could have done more. The only reason we stopped was because we had to be somewhere else at a certain time. Um, Rosie was getting microchipped. Um, And uh, man, I've been really fucking loving it as like a fitness thing because I've... 
I've always I've always wanted to improve my cardio health, like my ability to 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 run and my heart rate and my breathing and everything. But I have always absolutely hated any type of cardio. I don't like running because it just ends up hurting my knees and my ankles. I don't think my body should run. I think that I'm too fucking long. I'll hurt myself. I look like a fool. I just don't like it. I used to roll my ankle frequently uh, when I would run as a kid. I'm fast, but I just I just hate it. I don't like it. Biking, I feel, I feel like I, I, w- I would actually enjoy cycling, but I don't think that it's safe. And I just don't like how uh, annoying cyclists are on roads for every driver. It just seems so dangerous and shit. There's no good bike paths like anywhere to ride regularly. I don't like that. Um, And then I tried skipping for a little bit. I actually liked skipping, but I am too tall for the rope. And I couldn't find uh, any... (laughs) Who the fuck is that? They were just looking in the window. Oh, because they're listening to the show, I suppose. <laughs> Dude, the walls here are so fucking thin. This is probably the thinnest. I mean, we used to record the show in a garage, and I reckon the walls here are thinner. Was that guy wearing a helmet? <laughs> no, Walking he down the street wearing a fucking wearing helmet? Wearing a Peaky Blinders hat. Oh, Dude. We're in such a ritzy suburb. I do not fit in. I'm screaming cunt at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and there's there's dudes walking around in Peaky Blinders caps unironically. <laughs> yeah, and like he's and you know, right? Here's how you know uh the area's money versus scummy, right? Scummy areas will have Peaky Blinders caps, but rich areas will have Peaky Blinders caps and the difference is that cunt has not seen the show. You know, like anyone wearing a Peaky Blinders hat and they're young, it's like, dude, you are not Chilean Murphy, okay? You're not you're not that good looking. Nobody looks that good in a fucking Peaky Blinders hat. You just look like you left the op shop uh, and bought that as a joke. Take it off. That guy is wearing it because he has money. Um, and uh, he's looking in windows, I assume, either because I'm screaming cunt or he's a uh, sex pest. And I, and I suppose tonight we'll find out. You know? Don't worry, I'm in the front room. It's my turn first. I'm in the front. I'm the closest. Yeah, true. I'll come down the stairs. <laughs> As he comes in you. Disgusting. <laughs> Filth. Sorry. The show's back. Uh, I've been getting really into swimming, dude. I've been really, really enjoying it. I was always a strong swimmer. I've never swum competitively or anything, but I'm actually like thinking about uh, just improving... My, I'm not. I'm, it's, I'm like months and months away from doing that. But I would do a race. I've been thinking about it. You know, I might do a Cody Simpson. You know, he he threw away his illustrious music career, that was certainly going really well, and traded it in for swimming. You know, to almost make the Olympics. That could be me. I could almost make the trials for the Commonwealth Games. At 27 years old, do you reckon I could do it? I think you could almost make the qualifying uh, for the states. For the states? Yeah. Okay. I reckon that's a pretty good goal. If I could come fourth in state, I reckon that'd be good. Does that qualify? Yeah. No, no. To qualify is to get the time to compete at the state level. Oh, okay. So it's not like first, second, third. You just have to hit the time. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm like a couple seconds out from qualifying in the state for the Commonwealth... to. If I'm a couple seconds out from qualifying for state to compete in the nationals to compete in the Commonwealth Games, that's pretty. That's a pretty big goal. That's yeah, probably. Yeah, I at think this, that's pretty achievable level, to not make it into state. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think that. Well, well, I reckon that anyone listening to this show could not make it to state. Yeah. You know, I if if you work hard enough or don't work at all, I reckon it's totally achievable to not make state. Mm. All right. Well, let's make that a, a goal for everyone. <laughs> don't make it to state. Is there anything before state? Oh, there'd just be like local, regional ones. We could probably do like a Hobart race. Okay. I can have a look at Hobart. Do you think I could place in a Hobart race? No. Fuck. What do you mean? Oh, I could have a look. Okay. Would you like me to research some races? Yeah, let's research some races okay. and see if I could if I could place. Because what am I doing now? Like, a, like what is a ra- I don't even know what a fucking race is. Is that 100 meters? 50? <clears throat> yeah, there's 50 meter, 100 meter, 200 meter. Okay. 400 meter, 800 meter, 1500 yep. meter. 50. 50. Yeah. Yeah. That would be my... 23 seconds. 
Okay. Is like not the world record, but quite fast. Quite fast. Okay. So right now I'm doing 50 and probably like what, 30? No. No? No. 25? 45. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I think that's probably mainly because I don't know how to tumble turn. You are getting a lot better today. You're a lot quicker than you were on Thursday. Yeah. I was watching you swim today and you're much quicker. Yeah. And, and, and guys, watch out. Because when I get my new chin, <laughs> when I get my new teeth, my new jaw, and I have a swimmer's body, I'll fuck your dad too. <laughs> I don't care. No skin off my back, <laughs> you know? So just, just watch out is what I'm saying. When I almost qualify for state, it's over for you. <laughs> that is good. Um, how long will we be going here? Oh, 30 minutes, halfway. Perfect time to talk about my balls. Guys, manscaped.com. All right. What's my code? Rosie. Spears. <laughs> Keelan's just like, the minute Rosie was hired, he's like, you know what? I don't even want to remember what my job was. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> I got no... Yo, great. Rosie's in training? Cool. I'm going to rip up the manual. <laughs> I don't need this shit anymore. Fuck that. Use code SPEARS for 20% off. And I think this is what it is. Code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping for manscaped.com. The Lawnmower 4.0. I've got it all here, guys. It's really good stuff. Um, dude, I actually haven't used this for a while because I don't know about leaving pubes in the communal shower, but... You know, <laughs> Let me tell you what, on that final day, it's going to be clogged. Oh. <laughs> Fine, I'll shave them regularly, just for you, mate. Oh. Manscaped.com, 20% off and, and free shipping. Use code SPEARS. The Lawnmower 4.0, dude, this stuff's great. If you bought the 3.0, sucked in, because this shit is great. <laughs> really, really good stuff. Honestly, the 3.0 was great. This shit is way better. Um, and I'm, I'm saying that as a man who uh, uses it a lot. It's actually really, really great stuff. Um, and there's also, they've also got stuff like Ball Reviver. Now, I've not used this. Ball Toner. Haven't used this yet. Luke has. He reckons it's the best experience of your life. Keelan, you've used it. Yeah, I use all of it every day. Really? Yeah. Every day you revive your nuts. Well, I use the, uh, the moisturizer. The, the, on your balls? Yeah. I have to try this stuff. Maybe, maybe you know what? Next episode, I'll try all of it. Keelan will show me how to apply it. <laughs> I'll use all of it and I'll let you know how I go. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. All of their stuff's great. Use that shit. All right. We're coming up to the end of the podcast now. It's time to do uh, everyone's uh, fa least favorite part, uh, miscellaneous bit at the end. Uh, where I answer questions sent in by you, the dear listener. Uh, if you uh, have a question or if you have a story, if you need some life advice, if you have something that you think you could contribute to the show, uh, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com. That's my email. That is podcast at lewspears.com. Now, uh, this one's a little bit of a recap from the previous episode uh, sent in by a gentleman uh, called Sex Before Marriage. That's not his name. That's the name of the email. <laughs> Imagine if that was his name. Hello, my name is Sex Before Marriage. Um, hey, Lewis. Uh, so I talked about uh, a guy uh, was with a girl who had, had had many sexual partners before and he was celibate and he thinks that's how you should be. Um, and also she was asexual and he wanted to wait till, the, till marriage uh, for them to fuck. And my advice was basically like, uh, I don't know if you want to wait that long for someone who doesn't want to have it at all because you'll probably be di bitterly disappointed because you'll be like, finally, the weight was worth it. And she'll be like, I still think that's gross. Um, so this guy chimed in. Hey, Lewis, I've been listening in and loving your comedy from here in the UK. Thank you, mate. I thought I can contribute to following the advice email for the dude worried about his beliefs not lining up with his girlfriend. As a Christian myself, my beliefs include not having sex before marriage. I thought that was a Catholic thing. And although my wife was a virgin when we married, I was not. Okay. None of us are perfect, and I think that even if your beliefs line up, how Christian is that? Well, I'm allowed to fuck who I want, but if she's even made eye contact with a, with a man, ugh, whore. Um, 
None of us are perfect, and I think that even if your beliefs line up, you can't expect that your partner will have met every one of those. That's true. I wouldn't expect my wife to have never lied before I met her, even though we both believe lying is wrong. True. Uh, So regardless of whether your beliefs line up or not, all you can consider is who the person is today and what they want to do going forward. The past can't change, so you just have to forgive and forget how Christian of this man or attach them to a cross and burn them alive as a witch. Oh, no, he didn't write that. Or if your partner doesn't share your beliefs before you got to, didn't share your beliefs before you got together, uh, then you can't expect them to have followed any of those beforehand. Yeah, that makes sense. We can't force our beliefs on others, and unless people, uh, what people are doing is against the law, all of our restrictions are self-imposed. Dude, this guy's like a fucking monk. Seems like the bigger issue for the guy asking for advice is the asexual thing for sure. I also agree with that. <coughs> Cheers for the podcast. I was late to your solo stuff and stand up, but I would love it and hope you can get to the UK one day. Yeah, hopefully, dude. I would love to. Yeah, I think that guy's right. I think the the asexual thing is absolutely more the issue. Like if you're waiting till marriage and to have sex and then like, I do not want to have sex ever. I feel like when you, if you do get married, you'll be like, all right, it's time to fuck. They're going to be like, ah, this is... I don't like this at all. It might change it for her and then change it for you. You'll feel like you've wasted your time. She'll feel like, ah, fuck, I liked it much better when he didn't want to fuck. That's what I think. Um, Now, anyway, after that one's out of the way, it's time to talk about something a little bit more intellectual. I ended up getting partially cucked in an orgy while on acid and cocaine. Great. Now, I haven't read this. Uh, This one better live up to the subject line. G'day, cunt. My name is Jason and I am, uh, for reference, I am 20 years old. I met this girl who is close to 30 years old at some random party I was at, instantly recognizable through a beautiful French accent and standout hair. Yeah, this, it begins, French. Didn't have much to do with her that night, but she came to my favorite pub and we started talking, ended up going to, to a rave in a tunnel pipe and taking acid together. What kind of a fucking night is this, dude? This is like some, some night out of a crazy teenage movie. This is like a super bad night. Uh, we both tripped a classic romance story, uh, but we're not falling for each other, just sharing an experience. We went our separate ways after tripping. Next time I saw her, I was having a really shit week, and Friday, the power got shut off to my house uh, when it wasn't meant to, and I got stuck in a hotel. It was a nice hotel, but definitely a hassle. Went to a strip club Friday night. This guy is, like, on a rampage. And ended up coming back with the stripper to smoke weed. How the fuck did this man pull this off? <laughs> Went to a stripper and got her to come back to a hotel to smoke weed. She probably fucking robbed him. Um, Unfortunately, we just cuddled and nothing happened. The next night, I had this French girl come to drink with me. Dude, what is this guy doing? We ended up doing some more acid together and she invited me to hang with her friends at another hotel. Okay. When I got there, she started telling all of us how the last time she was in this hotel, she had an orgy. Things went from there, but it was a bit strange Besides tripping on acid, I had just started drinking and the people involved in the orgy were three guys, a trans person, two girls, but one fell asleep, so it was down to one girl. (laughs) Keelan just goes, yuck. Come on, bro, that wasn't very TikTok of you. (laughs) Nothing wrong with that. The French girl started taking her clothes off and making out with a trans person, so everyone started joining in. Took it to, okay, so like four dicks and one French girl. Awesome. She didn't let me put it in though, which was weird at the time. And I just went, fuck it. I'm going to go do some cocaine and come back. Did some coke and we ended up on the balcony when I was having a smoke. She and one of the guys came out and just started having sex in front of me while she looked at me and touched my face. I think I got cucked and felt really bad about it. Eventually passed out on the couch and woke up to the next morning extremely depressed about the night's ventures. Everyone at the orgy was great except for her and she was the one who brought me. I've been kicking myself on whether or not it's super weird or if I'm coming across as weird. Have a shit one, Jason. Yeah, dude, that's a weird night. I don't think you're strange for thinking that's weird. I don't know, is that rude? Inviting a guy to an orgy and then not letting them participate? I guess that's rude. I think it's rude to... I mean, that's less of an orgy. It sounds like more of like a strange gangbang with with like a dude who's not allowed to participate and then a trans person who I assume was participating from your story. I don't know. That sounds like a fucking... I think you need to slow down. You know what that, what that 
after reading that, that made me go, you need to have a little bit of a, a, a lie down and, and, and a bit of a think of like, man, is this what I want to be doing? Because it sounds like maybe not. Maybe slow down a little bit, dude. That sounds like a fucking drug-fueled rampage that ends with a bit of a sad night. That's what I think, man. So, uh, yeah, fuck that are my thoughts, dude. That's where I'm going to end the episode. Fuck that. Thank you very much for listening. There's a Patreon episode up right now. It's been pre-recorded. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you in the Discord and I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll talk to you next week and I hope you have a shit one. <laughs>